You've just been given a bill of materials listing all the electronic parts in your system and have been tasked with performing a reliability prediction to determine the failure rate of those parts. Where do we begin? My name is Joe Beland. I'm Isograph's Senior Technical Advisor and Trainer for North America with over 20 years of experience. And today, I'd like to walk you through the BOM import process in Reliability Workbench. So if you've been given a bill of materials, it probably looks something like this. You have a list of the parts, probably given by part number, maybe a description of what those parts are, and a quantity. And if you're familiar with Reliability Workbench, you probably know about the import capabilities and might try and import. You can import from Access, XML, Excel files, Clipboard, CSV, or any other text file format. So you might try and import your bill of materials. It's going to take a little bit of work to get this bill of materials to import into Reliability Workbench, and I'll walk you through what we need to change and why we need to make those changes. To begin with, we'll start with just the basics right here, and we're going to see why it doesn't work and what we need to change. For this example, I'll be using the clipboard import method as it's easiest to go back and forth between the spreadsheet that I'm working with and Reliability Workbench. So let me go ahead and copy all my data onto the clipboard, then jump over to Reliability Workbench, and choose my import as clipboard. If you've watched our other import tutorials, you know to click the column names in first row checkbox. On the schema tab, you can see the fields that I've copied onto the clipboard. And so we need to tell Reliability Workbench what table to import it to. On the table matches tab, I'll choose my external clipboard table and then scroll down to the PD blocks that stands for the prediction module blocks table. Once I've made that match between those two, then I'll go to the column matches. And if my external columns from my Excel spreadsheet have the same names as the application columns in Reliability Workbench, I can use the auto match feature. In this example, only my quantity field matches the name. The other two all have to match manually. So my component field would match to the description in Reliability Workbench, and the part number would match to the part number field in Reliability Workbench. After making those matches, I'll go ahead and click Import, and I'm going to be confronted with an error message. The error here, no primary key specified for import to table PD blocks, is referencing the fact that the ID field in the PD blocks table in Reliability Workbench is the primary key in that table in the database. A primary key field must have a value, and it's constrained to be unique from every other value. In this case, I haven't matched anything to the ID field, so Reliability Workbench will give me an error that the import is not possible. This ID field is the same one that we see in Reliability Workbench. If you add a new component block, you'll see that ID field here, which is automatically numbered by Reliability Workbench. If you were to try to create a block through the user interface without an ID, Reliability Workbench would give you a very similar error message. This issue is easily remedied by adding an ID field to our import bill of materials. To do this, I'm just going to add a new column for the ID. I can use Excel's auto numbering function to create unique numbers for each record. While I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and name the columns in my spreadsheet the same thing that they're called in Reliability Workbench. This will allow me to use the auto match feature going forward. Okay, now that I have the ID filled in, let's go ahead and copy that back onto the clipboard and retry that import into Reliability Workbench. Once more, I'll import from the clipboard. The column names are in the first row. The clipboard is being matched to the PD blocks table. And on the column matches, I'll choose the auto match. This time, the fields will automatically be matched to the Reliability Workbench columns. When I click the Import button, the import is successful. Reliability Workbench will tell me as much, and I'll close the Import dialog. However, we'll immediately begin to see problems. First and foremost is all the blocks imported as the blue system blocks. These system blocks represent systems, subsystems, assemblies, or PCBs. 
they aren't used for individual components such as capacitors, transistors, integrated circuits, and the like. What's more is you can't convert from one to the other. If I edit one of these blocks on the general tab, you'll see the category simply is not filled out. This is problematic. I can't actually make this a capacitor block. In order to do that, I want to import it as a capacitor, which means I need to tell Reliability Workbench what it is during the import. Reliability Workbench will determine that using what's called the Category Keyword field. You can see this field yourself when you're creating a new block through the user interface. If I click to create a new component block, you'll see under the Category dropdown, when I choose a component by category, the field right next to that is identified with the keyword. And this will have a little code identifying the standard and the component type. So the keyword field is always three letter code to indicate the specific prediction standard that I'm using. In this case, I'm using MIL Handbook 217, and then a hyphen, and then a two letter code to indicate the specific component category. The other issue we might notice is that the parts came in in a flat layout. There's no indentured or hierarchy to it. In this specific case, the power supply is our unit, and all of these components represent elements of that power supply. During the import process, we may also want to import them in hierarchical format. Let's take a look at how to solve both of these problems. For the hierarchy, that's the simplest one to solve. Reliability Workbench determines the hierarchy with a parent column. The parent column contains the unique ID of the parent under which that component is a child. Since all of these components should be children of the power supply, we just have to enter the power supply's unique ID in the parent field for all its child components. For the second problem of identifying the component's categories, what I've done here is created a list in Excel of all of the MIL217 component categories and their corresponding keywords. I've then created a new sheet using an Excel lookup function to search the description in that categories spreadsheet and find the keyword for the closest matching category. This process might use an Excel lookup function, an Excel macro, or something else similar to apply these categories to all the blocks in our bill of materials. Now that I've applied the parent and the category, let me go ahead and copy these back onto the clipboard. And we're going to jump back into Reliability Workbench. Let me redo the import. Importing from the clipboard and matching once more to the PD blocks table. I'll use the auto match feature once more and click the import button. Now when we expand the node, you'll see a couple of things. Firstly, is we have the uh, indentured hierarchy as we want. The components are all children of the power supply. Secondly, they're all yellowed blocks, meaning they're component blocks. And if I double click on them, you can see that this is in fact a capacitor. It selected the correct keyword. And that will apply for all the others as well. You can see the, the category in Reliability Workbench matches the category listed in the parts description. Now, for many users, this would be sufficient to get the bill of materials into Reliability Workbench, but we would still probably have to do a little bit of manual work. We'll notice there was a little bit more information that was given in our Excel spreadsheet that may not be uh, identified or correctly imported into Reliability Workbench. For instance, this capacitor is a specific kind of capacitor with a specific capacitance. We didn't really specify that, so when we import into Reliability Workbench, those values will take on a default value. The capacitor style and the capacitance are both assigned a default value. We might want to use the information provided in our spreadsheet and import those values, those parameters, to Reliability Workbench. Now, most of the time when we're importing parameters, we're most concerned with what we call the blue parameters or construction parameters. These parameters in Reliability Workbench in blue 
are those parameters that are inherent to the part based on its construction. They will not vary for parts with the same part number. The fields with the black headers or black labels are what we call the environmental or usage parameters. These can change from application to application. Things such as the environment, ambient temperature, or voltage stress ratio are all examples of, of parameters that could be different in different usages of the same part. For the most part, during the import, we don't worry about the black parameters because many of them can be assigned globally within Reliability Workbench itself. Things such as the environment, the temperature, and the stress can all be globally changed in Reliability Workbench. The blue values, however, might be the ones that we want to import. To import those values, I've expanded once more on my spreadsheet. This required a little bit more manual effort than I've had to do so far, extracting where I could see it, the capacitance rating for the capacitors, and also the style keywords. Now these style keywords actually are coming from the MIL Handbook 217, which identifies a code or a, a two or three letter combination for every kind of capacitor recognized by that standard. So I've had to do some lookups, a little bit more manual work, although Excel macros and functions might help speed up this process. And then assembled these values into the param values key field. The param values key or parameter values keyword format field is how Reliability Workbench stores the parameter values for every single component. You can see that in Reliability Workbench, if you reconfigure your grid view, to show the parameter values field, which you can do from the grid layout options, you can add the parameter values column to your list of visible columns. There's two of them. One is descriptions, which is more human readable descriptions. The other, the param values key is the one we want, and that's going to be abbreviations. But you can see all those parameters for every single part and how they're stored in Reliability Workbench. This field can be imported in full or just in part. We can import just a few of these parameter values, and any values we don't import will assume a default value. So in our Excel spreadsheet, I've used a combination of lookups and functions to assemble a param values keyword field for the capacitors and for the resistors. For the others, like the transformer and the diode, there wasn't really enough information to set any parameters based on what was given in the bill of materials. Now that I have this param values key field, I'll once more do the import, copying all the information onto the clipboard, going to Reliability Workbench, and once more going to the import. On the column matches, note that not every single field will be matched, nor does it need to be matched. Things such as the style field, those were for my, uh, my own uh, intermediate steps in the process, are not actually intended for import. But now when I click the import button, it re-imports all the data, this time grabbing the parameter values and importing those as well. Now when I look at this capacitor, it correctly identified it as a ceramic capacitor with a with a 33 picofarad, that's 3.3 times 10 to the negative 5 microfarads of capacitance. The good news is, once I've done the work of setting those parameters on import, I'll never have to do it again for that part number. Reliability Workbench makes it very easy to reuse data that you've created once. You can create a library of parts and continue to add to that library as you import new parts. Any project you've ever created can be used as a library. You can select the file attached library, or you can create a new blank library. Let me, let me do that. I can add all of these parts that I've imported to my library simply by selecting the library itself and then the special functions, copy component parts to library. Reliability Workbench will add all of those components that I've imported and their parameters to my library file now. The next time I need to import a bill of materials, I won't need to worry about grabbing all those parameters. I can just reuse them, the ones that I've created from the library. 
let me show that. I'm going to go ahead and do a new project this time. And for my Excel spreadsheet, I'm going to revert to the version that simply had the parent value. I need that because I want the hierarchy, but I don't need anything else, the category or the parameters. Those are going to be read from the library. So let me copy this onto the clipboard once more. And in Reliability Workbench, I'll do my import. And match the fields. When the import is complete, I'll have the hierarchy, but none of the blocks will, of course, be matched with their parameters or their category. But that's okay. The most relevant piece of information, the one that I really wanted, was the part number. This is what the library is going to be used for its lookup. There's a function in Reliability Workbench to look up the part number of every part in my project against the part numbers that are stored in my library. It will then copy the component category and parameters from the library to the project parts. So from the special functions menu, I can just choose copy library parts parameters to matching project parts. Reliability Workbench assigns the category and the parts parameters as I've defined them previously. And this saves me the effort of ever needing to define those parameters or import those parameters from the spreadsheet again. The first time I do this bomb import, it might take a little bit of extra effort to set up all those categories and the parameters, but every subsequent time, every time I'm given a new bill of materials, I only have to worry about new part numbers that I've never worked with before. I hope this little tutorial helps you get started with importing a bill of materials into the reliability prediction module of Reliability Workbench. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to Isograph. Thanks, and have a great day.